In this demo of Secure Network Fabric, we are going to focus on two main use cases, hybrid cloud transit and extranet. Many enterprises require segmentation for operational efficiency, improved blast radius, as well as security and compliance. In our scenario, Acme Corp is using F5 Distributed Cloud to create and manage three different segments, prod, dev, and shared services. Acme Corp would like to keep prod and dev environments separate. In addition, Acme Corp places a common logging infrastructure within their shared services and requires both prod and dev environments to benefit from it. Note that this setup is within AWS and makes use of the AWS Transit Gateway TGW that is fully orchestrated by F5 Distributed Cloud. In step number one, we are going to configure Cloud Connect. Cloud Connect is a construct within F5 Distributed Cloud that allows connecting one or more VPCs into our network fabric and placing the VPCs in a particular network segment. We will give the Cloud Connect a name, referencing the AWS TGW site because we might have more than one across the globe. Credentials, Cloud Credentials, are provided to allow the connectivity from the VPC to the AWS TGW, and each of the onboarded VPCs will be placed in a network segment. A five distributed cloud understands that different customers might have different requirements and thus provides a ton of flexibility in terms of orchestration of routes in the spoke VPCs. The options at a high level range from injecting a default route across all route tables or a particular route table, to injecting specific prefixes, again, within a route table or across all the route tables, or finally, manual mode, where customers might have their own methods to orchestrating VPC routes. Finally, we need to place this Cloud Connect corresponding to one or more connected VPCs in a particular segment. Notice that we also have a toggle to allow or isolate the segment from the internet. We follow the same process for all three VPCs and in the end have three working cloud connects, each of them referencing a particular VPC, each belonging to a segment as you see in the diagram. Network segments by default are isolated environments. We can see this by issuing a ping from a workload within the prod VPC or prod segment to a workload within the dev segment and a workload within the shared services segment. As you can see, both pings fail. As a conclusion, intra-segment communication is allowed by default and inter-segment communications are not allowed by default. Going back to our requirement, we have achieved the prod and dev isolation but we still need to allow both prod and dev to access shared services segment and benefit from the logging services that live there. To achieve this, we have the concept of a segment connector. It is a way to allow any two segments to communicate via route leaking. So as you can see in the diagram, we would like to have a segment connector between prod and shared, as well as between dev and shared. We will configure a segment connector between prod and shared services. We will keep the connector type as direct, which basically means it is a bi-directional model where there is no natting whenever communication happens between these two segments. Whereas if you use the SNAT model, that is generally unidirectional, meaning prod can initiate to shared, however shared cannot initiate traffic to prod. We repeat the same for defining a segment connector between dev and shared. The resulting configuration allows shared to connect to both prod and dev, but prod and dev are still isolated as per the requirement. Now we go back to the prod VM and we'll try to ping the workload in shared. And as you expect, this is now allowed because of the segment connector. Another important aspect of segmentation is extending this segmentation to multiple locations, be it on-prem or cloud. 
many organizations and customers already have some sort of network segmentation within their on-prem environments via running SDN fabrics or running VRFs traditionally. They would like to extend these on-prem segments, prod and dev, to the cloud, ensuring end-to-end -end segmentation. A five distributed cloud enables running customer edge appliances in various forms across on-prem and multi-cloud environments, allowing consistent connectivity, segmentation, and security. So in our scenario, we will create network configuration for our on-prem site, which is essentially associating a particular VLAN tag with a specific segment. For example, VLAN 100 is being associated with prod and VLAN 200 is being associated with dev. And as you can see, each of those interfaces has its own IPv4 address. So the net result of this is the prod workloads on-prem can communicate with the prod workloads in AWS. Similarly, for the dev segment, we can ensure that it can never communicate to prod and prod cannot communicate to dev. Okay, so this is about extending segmentation. Let's go ahead and configure this segmentation. In the list of interfaces, we only have the default interface, Ethernet 0. And now what we will do is create two new sub-interfaces, each with its own VLAN tag. One being mapped to the prod segment, giving it the IP address and repeating the same process for the dev segment. In our example, prod is on VLAN 100. So we reference that internal interface Ethernet 1, and I will place it in the prod segment. Think of these as sub-interfaces. Notice that segments are a global construct, and there is no need to recreate them. We will skip showing how we did the same for the dev segment, but it's essentially the same steps with a different VLAN tag, 200 in this case. Now we can test communication again by running ping from the prod VM running within the on-prem environment to the VMs running in the AWS cloud in the prod and shared VPCs. Both of these pings are successful and we have managed to extend the segments prod and dev to the on-prem environment. It is important to understand that the ping from on-prem to shared services works because of the segment connector between prod and shared services. Now we may have a use case where an organization might be offering an application or a service to external entities, such as a partner or customer that needs to access some of the applications that live within the prod environment. In this use case, we will again use Cloud Connect and place this external VPC into an external segment, as you can see here in purple. To facilitate that, we will use the assume role approach, where a third party will not need to share their credentials with us. Instead, the third party will create a role within the external AWS account that trusts the F5 distributed cloud so that XC can orchestrate connecting their VPC into the TGW and placing it in the external segment that we defined. So all the external entity has to do is create that role and provide the ARN that we can then use as a credential within F5 distributed cloud to assume that role. As you can see, we have pasted the ARN here that we received from the third party AWS account, and we can now treat it just like any other Cloud Connect. We will also need to create a connector for it, reference the TGW site, the new Cloud credentials, and choose the external VPC. We'll also need to create a segment because the external segment was not created prior. And we're going to allow this segment to access the internet. As discussed, by default, segments are isolated. For our external consumer to be able to access these services and apps within prod, we will need a segment connector between the external segment and the prod segment. 
We could have used NAT, but for this example, we are using the direct connector. And as you can see, now we have the two initial connectors from prod and dev to share that we configured previously. And we have the new connector between the external and prod segments. So now that this is done, we again test connectivity with ping from a VM representing a workload within this external account located within the external VPC. This confirms we have correctly configured this external connectivity. On visibility, F5 Distributed Cloud Flow Analysis allows customers to visualize and understand traffic that is running across your network. We can look at the table view of flows in our external segment and then further zoom in on a particular IP as a source. Here you can see that the connection from this IP to our workloads in the prod segment. However, notice one of the flows is using ICMP, which is not the intended use of this resource. By contrast, TCP port 80 is the intended way to consume the service. So we can see that the consumers are overstepping and accessing services and ports that they should not be accessing. With this information now, we can place a firewall rule a policy that only allows the required HTTP communication and denies everything else. We can lock it down to a particular host if we choose to. We also add another rule so that everything else is denied. This is a zero trust policy to ensure that those external consumers are only able to access what they need to access. The firewall policy is applied for traffic coming from the external segment and going to the prod segment. To test the firewall policy, we will attempt the ping again. Ping is blocked now, whereas HTTP access is allowed. In the app-centric method, we will only share specific applications and services that live within a segment with an external entity instead of opening a full segment to a third party, making it a highly secure deployment option. Note that the external segment no longer needs to have a segment connector to the prod environment. So first, let's remove the segment connector between external and prod. As we are leveraging the app-centric method of connecting the external entity, we will next need to create a load balancer. We will give this load balancer an FQDN, a fully qualified domain name, and then choose HTTP or HTTPS. Then we will create the origin pool, which is basically the target for that load balancer. It references the workload's IP address within the prod segment that the load balancer will target. Thus, we need to associate the origin with the site and segment. We are using port 80 as part of this demo. Next, we are going to advertise this load balancer by using the IP address of the VIP in the external segment, which is what the external entity needs to target to access our specific prod application or the intended service. To make things simpler, we are providing a DNS name for the VIP leveraging AWS Route 53. Note that this is an optional step. Finally, now we are back to the workload in the external segment, trying to connect to the load balancer VIP. We will do it via the host name, which is the same name that we just gave in the Route 53 record. And you can see that this works. Next, we will curl the IP address of the workload. This is not going to work because the workload is not published and is not reachable. The only address reachable from the external segment's point of view within the prod segment is the VIP address that we advertised. This demonstrates that the networks are not connected and we are only exposing the desired apps and services via the created load balance. In this demo, we have discussed segmentation within the context of an enterprise and extending the segmentation between on-prem and cloud we also explained the need for extranet and how F5 can solve the extranet problem, both from a network-centric and app-centric approaches.